Krishna. Devotees online were a little bit late because yesterday morning there was some nationwide internet difficulty, Wi-Fi difficulty. And that difficulty came during the, the Radhastaka presentation. And so we're doing it again this morning. And the recording, everything sounds great here in the room. But for those of you that are remote, it sounded mush. And so we're We've been trying this morning to work out a different technology and it hasn't been successful so far. So we're going to try again. Um, let's see how it goes. Uh, you will, those, those who register for the virtual Vrindavan Yatra will receive your own personal copy in uh, English, Telugu, Tamil, Chinese, or Hindi, as you wish, or you can have multiple ones, that's fine too. And uh, they'll be available after the Friday evening class. Unless we decide to send it to you right away because the technology is not working. Let's see. Uh, so, as you see on the screen, there's the introductory slide. You probably can detect in the upper left corner and the upper right corner, there's two gopis or Radharani's attendants and Radharani's name in the center there. This is Rupa Goswami's writing in his glorification of Srimati Radharani. Beautiful poetry, beautiful composition, standard meter, nicely sung, and with a narration. And at the end, the ninth verse, Rupa Goswami is praying to Krishna to be satisfied with whoever, that means you and me, whoever nicely recites these eight verses and he prays to Krishna to fulfill all their desires or your desires. So nicely recite together and um, let's see how it goes. Radhika, who with the splendid beauty of her restless eyes places a kanjana wagtail bird turning to every direction, who is 
the molly flower that attracts the bumblebee of the prince of Raja's heart. And who's deeply filled with all transcendental virtues. Jagati Kila Samaste Sushtu Vistarayanti Rajadipati Kumaram Kelayanti Sakhi Bhi Surabhini Nija Kunde I worship Sri Radhika, who spreads the fame of her father, Vishabhanu Maharaj, throughout the world. And who plays with her girlfriends and the Prince of Raja in her own beautiful and fragrant pond. I worship Sri Radhika, whose smiling, submissive face is initiated in a vow to subdue the glories of the full autumnal moon, the Lord of the Lilies. Whose erotic pastimes are expanded by Krishna's naughty sidelong glances and who wears waves of elegance on her body. I worship Sri Radhika, whose braided hair, which is filled with various kinds of blooming flowers, resembles the spread out tail of a peacock that is dizzy of amorous feelings. And whose spotless cheeks are colored red with the pawn that emanated from Krishna's mouth. Mm -hmm. 
by pure, intimate affection for Lalita, whose all-round mood of friendship for Vishaka is well known, who is a box filled with priceless jewels of love for Krishna, and who's sweetly playful I worship Sri Radhika, who was crowned with a ceremonial bathing as the queen of incomparably glorious Vrindavan. Who is the presiding goddess of the Kartika month, which is the best time of the year? Who is the chief of all the innumerable dear gopis of Mukunda, and whose fame destroys all the sins of the world? I worship Sri Radhika, who looks upon even the backs of the extreme borders of Hari's toenails as being dearer to her than millions of hearts. Who is the Guru who initiates all the joyful restless eyed girls in the art of cleverness and whose glories are great?
The moon of auspiciousness on the bank of the daughter of the sun, Yamuna, Sri Krishna Chandra will be satisfied with whoever nicely recites this best of prayers, Radhashtakam, that is a spotless reservoir of erotic sweetness, and he will fulfill all the reciter's desires. This is a repeat of what didn't work so well yesterday, and I hope it worked properly today. We'll find out. And this morning, I'm very much looking forward to the next session, which is visiting, after visiting Radhakund, we're going to visit Yavat, and to get us a sense of where is Yavat, the first thing you're going to see is a map of Braja Mandala. Braja Mandala is um, our place where we're going today. Now, it doesn't show up so clearly on the screen that I'm looking at, but here's uh, a little thin pointer that points to, see the line that goes like this? It's pointing to um, over here, Radhakund, that's where we were. Radhakund is at the northern end of Govardhan Hill that runs mostly in a north-south direction. Here's the tail, here's Govardhan Town, and here's Radhakund. And you may be able to see this thin line. I'm going to fix this. We go forward. Here's another line that shows where Nandagram is. It says Nandagaon on the map, Nandagaon, right just below, just above where that red dot is, Nandagaon. And over here is where we're going. That's Yavat. Yavat. Um, I'm going to remove that darker arrow so you can see we're going to speak a, a little bit about Kokilavan. Kokilavan is a, even today, is a very um, natural forested area north, a little northwest of Yavat. There's Yavat in that black dot. And there's Kokilavan. Because Kokilavan has, I'm mentioning because it has some role to play in the pastimes of Radharani. Here's um, Kokila is a local word for cuckoo bird. And most people know cuckoo makes a nice sound. Just like, I don't know if you, in other parts of the world, they have cuckoo clocks. But when it goes to the hour, a little bird comes out 
and says cuckoo so many times depending upon the number of hours, one o'clock, two o'clock, etc. Cuckoo clock is from the cuckoo bird or coquila. So in this forested area, Coquilavan, where um, there are many cuckoo birds, one time Krishna went, usually the cuckoo birds or coquila birds make their sound in the morning, early in the morning, you can hear them, and also in the evening. So Krishna came in an unusual time of the day, desiring Radharani's association, and he went to the forest, and as birds will do, as one bird calls out loudly, the other birds respond. And Krishna made a sound exactly like a kokila bird in the kokila van. And the birds were singing in response to Krishna singing his cuckoo sounds. And it became a whole concert. And Jatila, back in Yavat, she heard. And uh, Vishaka, who was with Radharani, said, Oh, listen to this wonderful sound. If you give your permission, Radha and our friends will go to visit the Kokila birds in the Kokila van. And Jatila thought that would be very nice. And so they went into the Kokila van forest, somehow knowing because it was the wrong time of the day, it was actually Krishna. And they had some nice meeting in the Kokila van forest. Now, some of, there are some additional pastimes, and um, I had a significant misfortune. My hard drive crashed. It, those of you who are listening, if you know of that particular pastime, or, for that matter, any other Yavat-related pastimes, please uh, contact me during, the, during this coming period of time. And uh, we can include, especially if there's some images, but I can find images to go with nice Yavat-related stories. This is an invitation for you to participate in uh, the virtual Vrindavan Yatra. Yavat is the place of Srimati Radharani after Varsana, because in the Leela of Radha and um, the Rajbasis, there was a so-called marriage of Radharani to Abhimanyu. Abhimanyu was a cowherd man, and um, there's many details we'll hear about as we go further. But it's uh, here's a sign on the railway track where you want to visit Yavat. You can go to Yavat by train. But we're going to go virtually. Here's uh, some nice image of Dina Bandhu, pictured by the front area up there, speaking about Radharani's pastimes at the Yavat temple of Radharani. So there's residential quarters, of course, and in the back area behind him and toward the very center of the image is the temple. We'll see the deity shortly. Here's um, the scene, that nice tree that's in the courtyard and all the devotees honoring Prashadam. And there isn't room enough just down on the ground floor, so they're up there on the upper floor. And above the altar area, there's a spire covering, so, so there's no one sitting on top of where the deities are. And here's the deity. Very beautiful deity. Very beautiful deity. Stunning deity. This is a very clear uh, photograph. Radharani is effulgent. And by her side is Radha Kanta, the, the lover of Radha. So Radha, Radha Kanta. 
And going back a number of years, there were uh, very poorly taken care of murtis of Abhimanyu, who is the blackish figure on, on your right. In the center is his mother, Jatila, and next to Jatila on her right is Katila, her daughter. And they're all in-laws of Radha, her sister-in-law, mother-in-law, and her so-called husband, Abhimanyu. As the years went by, the devotees in Iskand decided to make the deities better, very nice. And so it's much better uh, condition that, you know, devotee artists are really good. And even more recently, look at this. They have a new set of Abhimanyu, because he's taller than his mother in this deity form. And so his mother's in the middle, and Katila is on our left, or Jatila's right. And very recent, just very recent, in the back corner outside the temple structure and the residential quarters is a newly installed deity of the goddess Kali. The goddess Kali was manifested when Abhimanyu heard that Radharani is with Krishna and the girlfriends of Radha came to know Abhimanyu is coming, look out. <laughs> so Krishna said, Radharani was, what, what do we do, what do we do? He said, no problem, don't worry. Krishna manifested this Kali form and the gopis were telling Abhimanyu, oh, isn't it nice? Your wife is worshipping the goddess Kali to give protection to her husband. You, Abhimanyu, you're so fortunate to be blessed with such a qualified wife as Radharani. So he was very happy that his wife was worshipping the goddess Kali for his well-being and safety. There's some well-known history of Durvasa Muni and the benediction that Durvasa Muni gave to Radharani. It's even in the Gopal Tapani Upanishad that one time Durvasa Muni was visiting in Vrindavan. Now there's two versions and I'll describe both versions. But the one I'd like is uh, Bhakti Chaitanya Swami's version. Durvasamuni was visiting in Vrindavan and as he was walking through one of the agricultural fields he saw some young gopis and the gopis immediately knew who this was. This is Durvasamuni. They came running, running, running and fell at his feet and is there some service we can do for you, O great sage? And Dervasamuni said, as a matter of fact, I'm really hungry. I've been fasting for many, many days. I would like something to eat right now. Each other said, well, we'll run back as quickly as we can to our homes and prepare something and bring them. Just wait. We'll come back shortly. And Dervasamuni said, I don't think you understand. I'm very hungry, and I want something right now. And if you disobey Dervasamuni and he becomes angered, you could have a big problem. And they knew that. So immediately, they got some water, and Radharani took some dust of Vrindavan, mixed the water with the dust of Vrindavan, and made some biscuits, and they gave the biscuits to Dervasamuni. <laughs> Dervasamuni said, What? You expect me to eat this? And the gopi said, Oh, you don't understand. Radharani is so expert. Everything she prepares is really wonderful. Just try one. Just try one. So, very doubtful, he tried one. 
and he found that Radharani's biscuits were just delightful. And so Durvasa Muni gave this benediction. O oh Radha, by my mercy, whatever you cook will be more delicious than nectar. It will increase the life of whoever eats it. Whoever eats your cooking will never know disease, invalidity, or defeat at the hands of his enemies. And the girls clapped their hands and they were so feeling so blessed. Their dear friend Radharani has gotten this wonderful benediction from their Vasamuni. And news went back to Kirtida, Radha's mother, and Radha's mother had a very close and affectionate relationship with Mother Yashoda. And when she informed Mother Yashoda of this benediction, immediately Yashoda said, Oh, can your little daughter, Radha, come every morning and prepare breakfast for Krishna before he goes out to take care of the cows? And Kirtida was very happy, lovingly happy, that her dear Radha would come and cook for Krishna every day. So that's how this um, practice of Radha cooking for Krishna every day began. When you visit in Nandagram, you can find a very special place in the palace where there was a special kitchen for Radharani and her gopi friends. And they prepared very quickly the most amazing uh, meals for Krishna. It is also said that she never cooked the same thing twice. Those of you that are cooks, you know what that means. No recipes. <laughs> no favorites. It's just every day is something different and something different and it's always fantastic. In Shiva, Shiva Ramaraj's writings, he has a slightly different version and it's quite okay that there's a slightly different version. He said that this exchange took place one time when visiting Rishabhanu's palace and that Radha served him so nicely during his visit that he gave this benediction. In any case, this is how the exchange between Radha and cooking for Krishna every morning began. And so early in the morning, Radharani, leaving the place where Jatila was keeping her confined, she went like a nice image here, with her friends to, um, to Nandagram. And it was a daily affair and cooking for Krishna before he went out to take care of the cows. Now for those of you that are not familiar, we show the deity forms of Jatila, the mother, Katila, the daughter, and her son, Abhimanyu. So this is a BBT painting taken from a story that's right in Nectar Devotion where one time uh, Krishna was enjoying with Radharani looking exactly like Abhimanyu. That's because Abhimanyu was out doing some purchasing of cows in the marketplace. And when he came back, Krishna whispered in Jatila's ear, look out, this rascal, Krishna, is coming in disguise just like me. So don't let him in. Give him a hard time. Tell him to go away. And Jatila was very happy to hear from her so-called Abhimanyu son, which was actually Krishna, to go take her broom and threaten Abhimanyu, get out of here. 
I know your tricks. You're making yourself look just like my son. Get out. And as this exchange was taking place, you can see over on the right side of the painting, there are the gopis. And the story is narrated in Nectar Devotion to describe or to give an example of a particular kind of smiling where smiling where teeth are shown. It's a particular Sanskrit term and that's what the gopis were doing. They were smiling, showing their teeth just in a laughter m mood. And uh, notice what's behind Krishna's back. It's his crown with his peacock feather. Very nice BBT painting. Nice pastime. But it was the business of Jatila, and we're going to hear more. Now she is acting as if in a contrary way to Krishna's pastimes, and Krishna's pastimes means meeting with Radharani. And of course, his other associates, but the particular love between Radha and Krishna is profound. So Jatila is serving as an obstacle. And her daughter, or Radharani's sister-in-law, is an, an, an accomplice in all of this. So the two are a team, and Radharani and her friends are always in opposition to Jatila and Katila, and it makes the pastimes very nice. So on one occasion, when Jatila was confining Radharani to the house, she told Radha, you can't go out to do anything, you stay in the house, period. And Krishna was hoping and hoping and hoping to meet with Radharani, but he got word Radharani's confined to the house. That's Radharani in the house, and that Jatila just outside the house with some cows. So Krishna was in big anxiety, big anxiety, lamenting. And Purnamasi, who resided not far from Nandagaon, saw Krishna in this condition. She asked what the problem. Krishna explained the problem. Purnamasi had the solution. And the solution was, uh, Vrinda Devi is very expert at making costumes. So let's go find Vrinda Devi. They found Vrinda Devi. Vrinda Devi made the following suggestion. Subal, which is one of the cowherd boys, has a complexion like Radharani. And so Subal was sent to Jatila's home in, on the pretext of searching for a missing calf. So when he came, Subal came, immediately Jatila was on the defensive. What are you doing here this hour of the day? And he said, very respectfully, <clears throat> a small calf has wandered from the herd and I'm searching for that small calf. I can't find the calf anywhere. Perhaps the calf has wandered into your house. May I take a look? And she wanted to say no, but she, their family, their occupation is protecting cows. So you may go, but don't stay long. So Subal did what he was told back in Nandagam. He went inside Radharani's quarters and he explained what the plan was. The plan was they would exchange clothes. He would wear Radharani's clothes and Radharani would wear his clothes. And because Radharani has a body in the upper part of her body that looks different than Subal's, she carried a calf across her chest, walking out. And Subal was in her room, dressed and looking like Radharani. <laughs> and this pastime is depicted in this painting. And some of you may know, on Gopastami, 
which is very soon. It's tomorrow, right? Go past to me. So Gopastani is the day that this pastime occurred, and many of our ISKCON temples that have large Radha Krishna deities will have Radharani with a calf across her chest or in her arms or something to indicate this wonderful pastime that took place at Yavat. One of our great acharyas, Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur, wrote a book, Chamatkar Chandrika, that's been now translated into English. It's pranks. The meaning is a moonbeam <coughs> of sheer astonishment. And this painting is the cover painting for the book that's been uh, now published. And I'm just going to narrate two of what has been translated as Krishna's pranks. Krishna's pranks. The idea here is regularly by Krishna's own potency he would create some obstacle or some difficulty or some challenge and then derive great happiness by clever ways finding a way around or to, to address the obstacle so his purpose would be met. So Jatila and Katila certainly play that role. So the first narration is Radharani is bitten by a snake. And the pastime goes like this. Jatila had been hearing again and again and again that her daughter-in-law was being defiled by the snake like Krishna. So she called her daughter, Katila, and described the problem. What should we do? What should we do? I've made a decision. I want that Radharani be forbidden to leave the house. She should not go to the river Jamuna to take a sacred bath. She should not go to the Surya Kund and worship the sun god at Surya Kund. She should not go anywhere and do all these auspicious things. She can do her worship of the sun god right here in the house. And you make sure she doesn't leave the house and I'll stand at the door with a stick in hand and if she tries to leave or anyone tries to come because Krishna will know that she's confined and if he comes, that rascal, I'll whack him with my stick. I don't see any other way. Listening to her mother, Katila says, my dear mother, this is not possible. Radharani's determination is overwhelming. And Krishna will find some way or another to be in Radharani's association. This will fail. And what to speak? Radharani goes every day. Every day to cook for Krishna. What about that? Jatila said, I, I want you to go inform Yashoda that the past activity of Radharani cooking for Krishna is over. She's never again going to go to Nandagram to cook for Krishna. And if she says that, oh, this is not good because Durvasamuni gave this benediction and you've been very kind always to let, Kirtida has been very kind to always let Radharani come. And she said, um, if she gives you this excuse, tell her, Yashoda, you're a knower of Dharma. And it's not a point of Dharma that a married woman 
goes to the home of another man and cooks from him every day. This is against Vedic culture. And we don't do these things. And so, if in the future you want to see that Krishna gets some cooking from Radharani, well, you send Dhanishta over here and she can pick up some items and three times a day she can cook for Krishna. But here in this house, she's not coming to your home again. So Katila delivered the message. And Mother Yashoda was very sad. So instead of Radharani's cooking, it was Rohini's cooking, his mother, Balaram's mother. And Balaram's mother cooked for Krishna and Balaram. But she noticed that Krishna wasn't eating as much. You know, mothers. <laughs> she wanted to see that Krishna eats more. So she did send Dhanishta to go to Radharani's place and bring some, not just some things, sweet balls and some other nice delicious things for Radharani, but um, five times the amount. Meanwhile, when Radharani heard this bad news that her mother-in-law was not going to let her out of the house, she became not only distressed, she became feverish, fiery in the heat of separation, and she fainted on the ground. Her gopi friends tried to make a soft bedding for her of fresh leaves, but wherever Radharani touched those leaves, they would smolder and turn to ashes. Her body was so intense with fire of separation. When Dhanishta came with this request from Yashoda, she saw Radharani in this condition. She was feeling very sad, but she knew what to do. She said, Radha, you beloved, is right here. Please open your eyes and see. And she opened her eyes and saw Dhanishta, <laughs> messenger from Mother Yashoda. She said, Mother Yashoda wants you to prepare some items for Krishna. Five times the amount that you normally prepare, and I'll carry them back. So immediately, Radharani, who was in fire of separation so much so that she was burning the leaves that were the place for her to lie on, she's now in the hot kitchen cooking and cooking with great happiness. When everything was passed on to Dhanishta, Radharani whispered something in the ears of her friends and a plan was made. When, after some time passed, Vishaka came running to um, Jatila's room, saying, Jatila, Jatila, the worst possible thing has happened. What's that? What's that? Your dear daughter-in-law has been bitten by a snake. She went out to gather some flowers for making a nice offering, and she saw a jewel, and she thought, oh, it must have been one of my jewels. And she reached down, but it was a jewel on the hood of a serpent. The serpent bit her, and she's dying. Her body is burning in fever. Please do something. Jatila turned to her daughter and said, Abhimanyu is in the cow shed. Bring him immediately. And you and I should go at once to find a proper doctor. Um, the proper doctor may be Purnamasi knows. Let us go quickly to Purnamasi's residence. So they went 
quickly to Purnamasi's residence. And when they came to Purnamasi's residence, lo and behold, she was being visited at that time by Gargi. Gargi, it's a very interesting story, right? Gargi is the daughter of Gargamuni. Gargamuni resides in Mathura. Gargi was visiting from Mathura in uh, visiting Purnamasi in Vrindavan. So Purnamasi turned to Gargi. Your 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 um, father is a very qualified Brahmin. Do you know how to do snake poison removal? She said no. But I have a younger sister. And my younger sister just happens to be visiting. She is married to a Brahmin in Benares. But she came to visit and she's in the other room and she's very talented. So Jatila is very enthused. Quick, quick, Gargi, can you go and ask your younger sister to come at once to our home? Purnamasi speaks and says, Gargi, please do what you can do to get your sister um, to come. Vidyavali is the sister's name. Vidyavali. So they go to Vidyavali's room, which is in uh, Gargi's house, because they were at Purnamasi's house at the time. And when they came to visit um, Vidyavali, it gets very intricate, isn't it? <laughs> Vidyavali, here's some service for you. Can you please go to assist Jatila in reviving Radharani? She's been bitten by a snake. You know the art. She said, oh, yes. My skill in, in snake charming and snake poisoning is known by everyone. But my dear elder sister, please consider what you're asking. We're from the Brahminical community and we don't associate with low-class people. This girl, the daughter-in-law of Jatila, has a very bad reputation. She goes here and she goes there, all over the place, and with uh, a young cowherd boy whose name I won't mention, and everyone knows, so I'm not going to associate with a person like that. And Gargi says, my dear younger sister Vidyavali, please don't make this spiritual mistake of thinking that the residents of Vrindavan are ordinary people. You're being asked by Jatila, who is a Vrijbasi. She's a great elevated person. We're from Mathura. And you're present in Benares. And you're used to associating with impersonalists that are filled in Benares. And your heart has become influenced, it appears, by their impersonalism, rather than respecting the worshippers of Narayan as found here in the residence of Vrindavan. So this takes precedence, please consider. She said, all right. But there's a difficulty. That young boy that's always associating with Radharani, if he even sees me, who knows, he may approach me and do something awful. So what about that? She said, don't worry. Gargi said to Vidyavali, which was Krishna, appearing dressed up like uh, her younger sister, Vidyavali means Krishna. It's, it's there, she's a doctor. Because Radharani said, yeah, yes, important. Ra when her, her mother came and said, we're going to get a doctor, Radharani said, don't bring a male doctor. I'm perfectly chaste woman. If you even bring a male doctor in here, immediately I'm going to give up my body. I can't follow your instruction. And Jatila had said, wait a minute. <laughs> 
you're 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 going to die. Please please do what is sensible in any circumstance. I am a chaste person. I'm not going to even allow a man to come in the room. And if you bring a man doctor, I mean it was planned part of Radharani's plan with her friends. Don't bring a male doctor. I'll give up my body. Ah, then another detail. Some nearby person said, we know, we know there's a very good person. Krishna has already cured the poison of the Kaliya serpent and bring him here. Radharani said, no, my reputation is already spoiled by that person. You bring him here, I'm, I'm gone. Don't bring Krishna here. Don't bring Krishna here. Finished. So what, did, what to do, what to do? Purnamasi may have a solution. So that's when they went to Purnamasi. So now the solution is Vidyavali, who is Krishna in disguise, as the younger sister of Gargi, and Gargi is going to accompany to protect Vidyavali from Krishna. <laughs> Very, Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur is wonderful. So Vidya, Vid, on the way, Vidyavali has a conversation with Jatila, saying the way that most snake bites are cured is by a combination of mantra and medicine. With mantra, I impose mantra on betel nuts and then I chew the betel nuts. Do you think your daughter can chew the betel nuts that I've chewed? And Jatila said, well, medicine is medicine, but I don't know if my daughter's going to want to chew betel nuts that you've chewed. And, and Vidyavali says, Jatila, you want your daughter's life to be spared. This is the medical cure I'm telling you. So you decide. She says, all right. <laughs>